You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are continuing our conversations in the Set Apart to Serve series. Today we're going to talk about curriculum, and we'll do that in just a moment with our friends from Concordia Publishing House. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us today in studio, Lisa Clark, Senior Editor for Curriculum Resources at Concordia Publishing House. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us in studio. Looking forward to catching up with you again. It's been a while since we've chatted. Yeah, I love being here. Thanks so much for having me. Jonathan Schultz is president and CEO of Concordia Publishing House. Welcome back, Jonathan. Thank you very much. It's great to be here with you guys today. It's good to catch up again and talk a little bit about CPH. And I know, Jonathan, we shared your story not too long ago yeah, about right. coming to CPH. Lisa, let's talk a little bit. Let's start with your story today, how you, the Lord brought you into this field of education, curriculum, and now serving at Concordia Publishing House. Where did it all begin? <laughs> yeah, it's a great question because for me, it's just a joy to look back and see how God has given me different experiences and things that has led me to where I am uh, in my vocations today. I am a commissioned minister, a secondary ed English teacher by training. I went to Concordia, Nebraska, and I was a high school English teacher at Lutheran High School South for a few years. And my husband was training to be a pastor, and when he graduated from the seminary, he was called to Emmanuel Lutheran in Waterloo, Illinois. And we were expecting our second, and I thought, okay, I'm going to take a baby break. This will be great. I'll be home and taking care of the kids. This will be wonderful. A little time. And then I thought, oh, it might be helpful to maybe look for a way to help with our family budget but still be at home if possible. So I went on the cph.org website to look to see if there were any careers available. Maybe they were looking into writing because before that, I knew I loved writing. I knew I loved teaching. I loved reading. And there was a time where I thought, oh, do I want to be a writer? What what kind of things do I want to do with my interests? But I just really had a heart for education. I loved the idea of being a teacher and to help teenagers because I saw others you know, make a big impact on the lives of students. And so that was something I was excited about. But I thought, well, of course, I love reading and writing. English teacher, there. When I was looking at ways that I can help from home, I saw I was looking for writing, but saw that there was a position for copy editing. And I thought, well, of all the English things, grammar isn't necessarily my favorite favorite, but I like it. I do like it. And I was <laughs> decent at it, I thought. So I tried, applied for the position. It was a freelance position. So I was able to do it at home. And the took the test, passed the grammar test and all of that. And my first job actually was working on the notes for the Lutheran Study Bible. So it was kind of baptism by fire as the wow. saying goes. <laughs> but it was fantastic because then I had just day after day, I was reading notes about the Bible. So that was huge. Over the years, just I kind of say that, you know, my the CPH family, my relationship with the CPH family kind of grew with my own family as my kids got older. CPH was asking me to do some more things. And so I became a copy editor, regular part time. Then I was called into the curriculum team. And then I am now the senior editor, the leader of that team of curriculum. So my whole team is actually a team of church workers. So it feels a little bit like a school faculty in some ways, <laughs> <laughs> the way that we work together and pray together and do all of those kinds of things. So it's been a joy to see how education and writing and all of my joys kind of get put together. And I can really help serve other teachers now. Yeah, that's such a great story of how you got to CPH. I got a little scared at the thought of a grammar test. Though. Like, I love grammar, yeah. but like, I kind of want to see what this test is. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know how I was going to do, but evidently, later on, my supervisor said, yeah, you did really well. I'm like, oh, good. Good to know. <laughs> I had to take a little mini one of those when we, you know, tried out different careers around the LCMS building one day just for funsies. And yeah, yeah that was that was, copy editing is a that's a skill. It is so, so intense. Yeah, I could talk more than I should on how intense copy <laughs> editing can be. Yeah, you have to kind of switch, turn a switch on in your brain yeah. to be intense on it. Yeah, yeah. Jonathan, we've told your story before, but for people who maybe haven't heard your story, how did you become a, an employee of CPH? Yeah, so actually I just celebrated my 25th year here at CPH yeah. last week. That was real exciting. They had a nice little party and everything, a surprise <laughs> party and happy hour, actually. So everybody enjoyed it. But my, my path to CPH actually started in Guatemala. 
And I am, I'm, I'm a PK. So my, my dad was a pastor. My grandfather was a pastor. My three brothers are pastors and I am the attorney. And I went to Concordia <laughs> River Forest. And then I went to Loyola for law school, practiced law in Chicago for about three and a half years. And then my wife and I, who I met at Concordia Chicago, and she's a Lutheran school teacher, we ended up going to Guatemala with the LCMS as long-term volunteer missionaries. And uh, down there for two years with our then one-and-a-half-year-old son, and that was a whole different matter, having the only blonde-headed kid in Guatemala just about. <laughs> and uh, we stuck out, that's for sure. But, but while I was down there, I met a CPH employee who was down leading a retreat for the missionaries. And we were walking on a cobblestone street one night, and he asked me, what are you going to do when you come back? And I said, I'd love to continue working for the church, using my legal skills more so than I was a business manager down in Guatemala. And I said, but nobody hires attorneys at that time. And he said, well, have you applied at CPH? And I said, no, I haven't applied at Concordia Publishing House. I didn't know that you had attorneys working there. And he said, we don't, but we're always looking for the right people to join the team. And so I said, well, what the heck, I'll send him a resume. And he forwarded it to the vice, his vice president, Barry Bob, who gave it to the then president, Steve Carter. And three weeks after we got back in June of 1998 from Guatemala, I was employed at Concordia Publishing House. And it's been a great ride. Originally, I came in as the, get this title, I was the assistant to the vice president of corporate development. And I was assistant corporate counsel. Of course, there was no corporate counsel. There was a <laughs> vice president of corporate development, but uh, and through the time that that title changed, and I became corporate counsel and then vice president of corporate counsel. And then a little more than two years ago, I was named interim president when our former president retired. And then in 2022, January, I was named the permanent president. And so uh, in the 154 years of Concordia Publishing House, we're, we're the ones leading it now. So that's pretty exciting. And speaking of leading, set apart to serve, we're encouraging, inviting people to consider church work vocations to serve as leaders and to serve as servant leaders in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. How has CPH become involved in set apart to serve? Yeah, great question. So right after I became interim president, one of my first calls congratulating me and talking about partnership and collaboration was from Dr. Jim Bonick who said, hey, we're doing this. Pastor Robson suggested I give you a call, and, and we're thinking about doing a curriculum and, and seeing how we could work together on something like this. And I said, sure, let's get together and talk. And uh, so, yeah, just from that in 2021, we, uh, we started this conversation and down a path of walking together to develop this curriculum. We at Concordia Publishing House and my coworker here, Lisa, and the rest of her team, I mean, we are the curriculum experts in the Lutheran Church. We've been doing curriculum for oh so long and various, various curriculums over the, over the years. And so it was just a natural for them to come to us and ask us whether or not we'd be interested in helping. And our answer was a resounding yes. So Lisa, how do you go about writing a curriculum? What is that starting point yeah. of knowing maybe a subject that you want to write a curriculum for, but what is that process for figuring out what that's actually going to look like? Yeah, that's actually been a fun question to answer different people in the past couple of years, especially as in the the past handful of years, you know, we've recently put out a new Sunday school, a new day school, new confirmation curriculum, on and on. And so then we have people coming to us saying, okay, I don't know where to start. I, how do, I want people to learn something. How do you go from nothing into a curriculum? And that's something that we really have a joy in being able to help explain without getting, I'll try not to get too nerdy here. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, it's we a like lot getting nerdy here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know me. I, I think the main question is, what are the key questions that you want to have to explore? And what are the things that you want people to take away from whatever it is that you want to teach. So who, and then you have to think about who, who are you wanting to teach? And so for us, we wanted to think about how many different levels the curriculum would be, how, what kind of space would this curriculum, where would this take place, for example? And then from the, from point A to point B, how do we get there, get from what we call prior knowledge to, to whatever the objective would be? 
So we we talked with the Set Apart to Serve group and said, okay, well, what are some of the main things that you want to get across? What are some main questions you want to address? And after they gave us some of that background information, we said, okay, we think this is how it should fit within the lessons and these are the the levels that we think might work and the less number of lessons. Anyway, how that how that journey should go from learning basically what it is to be a church worker and and various things about church work in general. We have more to learn about the Set Apart to Serve curriculum from Concordia Publishing House in just a moment. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others. To live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world. To live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. Welcome back to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are talking with our friends from Concordia Publishing House. As we continue our conversations in the Set Apart to Serve series, we're talking with Lisa Clark, Senior Editor of Curriculum Resources, and Jonathan Schultz, President and CEO for Concordia Publishing House. So we've got, you had the meeting with the the team for Set Apart to Serve to get an idea of what it is we want to accomplish with the curriculum, who the target audience is, and then starting to develop a framework for the curriculum. Now, who who is the target audience? <laughs> who are who are who who would benefit most from the curriculum yeah. that that you're working on? Yeah, I mean the quick answer would be everyone, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> would everyone think, know about being a church worker? <laughs> I think what one of the things that came out of our conversations is that we want churches to potentially be able to use this, but we also want Lutheran schools to be able to use this. And so we came up with the idea of having four lessons. So you could either have it once a, once a week for about a month in a church setting or throughout the week for a Lutheran school setting with maybe one day chapel day or whatever the case may be. And so that way you can kind of have an emphasis for, again, the month or the week, whatever that may be, where everyone can be looking at the same kind of content together at the same time. So that, for example, in a church setting, the parents can come home and talk to their kids about what they were learning. And, and there are, even if it's in within the school, there are some letters and things to send home so that there can be conversations mm-hmm. at the home as well. What kinds of things does this curriculum cover? What were those main questions, the, the points that you wanted to make sure that people, kids, learn yeah. through the curriculum? Well, we want to, yeah. first of all, start with the idea that God has given us great gifts through the church. And, you know, this, the, obviously, we will, as we're Lutherans, we want everything to be centered on Jesus mm-hmm. and the wonderful message that we have that Jesus is our Savior and what a gift that is to learn about that within the church. But we learn about that because of church workers often also. And so, how can we support church workers? How can we lift up church workers? And one of the conversations that continually comes up is people think about becoming a church worker if the conversation started somewhere else. I know that kind of makes sense, but when you ask a church worker, well, what made you think about church work? They'll they'll say, oh, well, my pastor said something or my teacher said something or my mom said something. And so part of the point of the curriculum is to remind everybody of that and say, let's have those conversations, moms and dads and pastors and teachers and DCEs and deaconesses. Let's have those conversations with people so that kids know what a church worker is, that they think about what that might be, but also ways for everybody at the church and school to uplift the church workers that we have as well. So let's go back to the idea. I, I love the idea of the curriculum being used in day school, in a in a congregation setting as well. Let, let's use an example of curriculum being used in a congregation mm-hmm. setting. Mm-hmm. Uh, paint a picture for me here, uh, like Sunday morning, maybe? Right. Sunday morning Bible class, for example, there would be lessons for early childhood, several different elementary, high school, also a level for adults as well. So that with the adults, they're learning some things, but they also will now know what 
the kids are thinking about too. So again, kind of intergenerational conversation can take place as well. So there are four four lessons, is mm-hmm. that right? That's so right. four lessons. So what the adults are learning yeah. can prepare them to have conversations with children about what children are learning in, yes. say, Sunday school or Definitely. a setting like that. Definitely. And that's something that we've just really enjoyed anyway with a lot of our curriculum now. The more conversations that we can have outside of even that class space can just continue the learning throughout every day. So what do the lessons look like for the littlest ones? <laughs> well, one of the things that... We, how should I put this? We realize that different scenarios have different time constraints. Um, A Sunday school class looks a little bit different from the preschool class, for example. So we have booklets and things and different activities and things for every lesson, for every level for the kids. But we also have extenders. And so extenders are things that are like, actions or songs or, you know, you're going to have maybe even games and different activities so that we first look at, you know, what does the Bible say about this? And then can you think of, you know, what what do you think about, for example, talk about your pastor, you know, those kinds of activities mm-hmm. that are very concrete, but then also some active learning and things. And it's it's been kind of fun, again, to see just that flexibility that you can put into those different lessons. How does that change when you get into the elementary and high school age? What kind of things do you add on or, right. or change to make it more applicable to the older age groups? Definitely. There's some more discussion, which is something we're always a big fan of, partially because it not only helps the kids really engage more, really kind of wrestle with the top content, but also it gives teachers a lot more flexibility, again, with, oh, we've got a five-minute space. So let's discuss for five minutes. We've got 20 minutes space. Let's just really dig deep mm-hmm. and really have a big conversation about this. We also will have a booklet available for kind of junior high and up that specifically talks about what those church work positions are, different possibilities that there are. We have posters that could be used at any level for visual, but especially reading level kind of, again, grades five, seven up, but also hopefully helpful for even adults to be able to see, oh, this is how, these are the different kind of church work positions that are there that maybe are some that people don't even know are possible. Mm-hmm. Right. That was my my next question for the church work offices that, that people might not know about yeah. or maybe haven't been around. Maybe they've never met a deaconess right. or a DCE before. How do they learn about those those offices or the those the church workers? Definitely. So I think the posters and the booklet mm-hmm. is one of the, key ways that we can show them those possibilities in a visual way, but also in the curriculum itself. There is time that we spend within the lessons to take a look at just, hey, did you know there there's something called a deaconess? There's some something called a director of Christian outreach, you know, and what those what mm-hmm. those different roles can be. Very good. So now when do we get the curriculum into the hands of the people? <laughs> That's a million dollar question. <laughs> it's quite a process, yes. right? I mean, help us understand the. I mean, you've, you've given us a nice picture of, you know, talking with the team to learn more about what it is that you're going to be teaching about or developing curriculum for. But really help us understand that process of developing a curriculum and how much time and energy and heart and soul go into developing a curriculum like this. Lots of heart and soul. And I think one of the beautiful things about partnerships, too, is that there's so much dialogue and conversation. And because of that, you want to allow space for just development to kind of almost organically happen. Whereas if we do something in-house, boy, we've got those milestones, right, Jonathan? We don't want to miss any of those steps. But I think Loosely speaking, we start with a concept and we talk together with all kinds of folks in the different departments of CPH. You want to talk to the marketers, finance, everybody. We want to look at what kind of papers available and what kind of weight of the paper do we want yes. and what, how many colors do we want to use and how many illustrations are we going to have and what kind of illustrator do we want to work with and how many authors do we want to help contribute and all those kinds of things. We really try to figure out early, early on so that everything's ready, so that when we have everything ready to go out to a printer, for example, they're ready for us too. And then internally, you know, once we get everything kind of figured out and approved and ready to go, then the for curriculum, the editors often do a lot of 
upfront work. We'll even sometimes give samples so that authors can kind of get a sense of what to do. Because every curriculum is so different, it's kind of nice to show them something to work from. And then it comes back to us and we go back and forth and work with our designers and our copy editors that we've already talked about who are amazing. And and uh, yeah, it's just honestly so collaborative. It's exciting to see how many hands touch curriculum on any project from Concordia Publishing House that when you pick up a book, you know, it, it's a labor of love from really kind of countless people. Yeah, there's a lot of moving pieces that go into something we printed like this. <laughs> <laughs> yep, definitely different medium, but similar process. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So where oh, is where are we on this this timeline? Do we have kind of a, a a drop date that we're shooting for here? Well, we're <laughs> we're not. I don't know. We're going through edits right now and okay. getting some feedback from outside groups mm-hmm. and things. And so, based on what that that feedback is, then we'll we'll move from there. So, what is the distribution going to look like once this is a, a final project and printed? What is that collaboration with universities, churches, those kind of places? What is that going to look like for distribution? Yeah, great question. So, uh, in part of our conversations with Dr. Bonick and Set Apart to Serve folks. LCEF, Lutheran Church Extension Mm -hmm. Fund, decided to come alongside as well and help fund a portion of this along with the universities. And so it's really a great, great instance, an example of us walking together as Synod. And so it's really exciting. But the prioritization, and in part because it's ready-made for teachers, is the Lutheran schools. Mm -hmm. So the first distribution drop is going to be made from preschool to, to high schools. All the LCMS schools are supposed to be receiving this. And then it's going to be available for congregations as well. They will probably have a, a couple extra hurdles as far as of using it and those sorts of things and being shared with exactly how would you use this in that context. But those re, those resources will be made available by us and set apart to serve as well and to equip everybody. Because, you know, this is a journey, right, that we're, that we're embarking on. It's, death. it's just a one-time flash in the pan thing, which is, I think, a really great part of the set apart to serve initiative. It's really become an initiative of the church. And so we're just excited about that. And we're, I mean, I'm sitting in my office all the time. When are we going to have this done? When are we going to have this done? But do you hear the complexity that my colleague Lisa here tells us about getting it done? So uh, sooner than later, without a doubt, is when it'll be done. Do you anticipate being this being print material, electronic material, oh. combination? Yes, there will be some print material and also some digital materials. So the early childhood, grades one through three, grades four through six, grades seven through eight, all have little booklets or I don't want to call them leaflets. They're not really leaflets, but kind of books for lessons. There will also be digital leader guides to go with those. And youth and adult levels are all digital where they can use reproducibles for the students in the class, uh, for Mm -hmm. lack of a better term. There will be a number of other supplementary and complementary resources that will complement meaning working together. So, for example, there will be some posters. There will be that booklet that we talked about and a number of other different resources that people can choose. For example, a chapel outline is a possibility for schools who want to use it. And we'll just kind of see who, who would like to use some of those pieces. So what is your encouragement for congregations, schools who may be getting this material to use it to really faithfully encourage their students to to consider church work? I would say you could already start now by checking out your Set Apart to Serve site just to kind of get concepts going, get 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 your mind in that headspace of thinking about it. But definitely, this is just a, a resource that I think is going to bless so many. And the goal is for it to be something that's conversational and approachable so that kids who've never even thought about church work at all can be thinking about it. And just, again, once they get their hands on this resource, the curriculum to take a look at it, really try to utilize it, utilize it together, you know, the whole school, for example, all together, or the church, whatever setting that may be. And then don't stop there. Keep those conversations going. We have our own experiences where um, within families, people are considering serving the Lord in these sorts of ways because, again, the conversation started somewhere. Very good. Where, or I should say, when would you like us to be on the lookout for a uh, set apart to serve curriculum coming out? In- yeah, we'll have updates probably 
regularly throughout the coming months. Okay. So just kind of take a look at just whatever gets released through Set Apart to Serve, and we'll let you know. Very good. So be watching the Set Apart to Serve website, lcms.org slash SAS. Our guest today, Jonathan Schultz. He is president and CEO of Concordia Publishing House. Jonathan, thanks so much for being our guest. Hey, thank you for us having us in. And Lisa Clark, senior editor for Curriculum Resources for Concordia Publishing House. Lisa, always, always thank you. <laughs> You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Anywhere.